everyone. Welcome to GameStack Live and our panel today, The New Normal, where we have an opportunity to speak to multiple senior game developers working at Xbox at different studios. We're going to chat today about the experience of being hired and onboarded during a global health crisis and what that experience has been like, as well as their tips. I'm going to go ahead and start off by introducing myself. I'm Fiona Sherbach. I work with Gaming Talent Acquisition at Xbox, and I am someone who's worked in games for a long time, but only at Xbox for the last year and a half. So happy to be here today and to introduce our panelists, starting with Amanda Armour. Amanda is a principal producer at the Coalition in Vancouver, working on Gears of War. Matt Hull, who is senior producer at 3-4 Industries, working on Halo. Our uh, wonderful Ellen Porter, who is a senior software engineer working at Turn 10 Studios on the Forza franchise. And then Christine Thompson, who's lead narrative writer on the much awaited Perfect Dark title at the Initiative in Santa Monica, California. Welcome. Thank you all for being here today. Uh, we know this is an interesting and, and challenging time in many ways, a uh, very unique way to be working as teams and working on game development in a distributed environment. Um, um, would like to start off by having each of you tell us your origin story, how you got started in the game industry, and and then how you came to Xbox. Uh, Amanda, could you kick us off? Yes, of course. Thanks, Fiona. Um, I'm Amanda Armour. My pronouns are she, her. Um, so about 22 years ago, I went for an interview at Sony Psygnosis, uh, which is in my hometown as an admin assistant. I got the job and fell in love with the games culture, the people who make games, and I've been in games ever since. Um, since being in Vancouver, um, I've worked at EA, Action Pants, Ubisoft, back at EA again. And then a year ago, um, in March, I moved to the Coalition. As I've been in sports for most of my career, and I was really excited to work in a different genre. Um, I'd also heard great things about the studio, the culture, and the people. Um, so I started in March last year, four days before the lockdown. So I had four days in the studio. Um, but I'm really loving it. Amanda, thank you so much for sharing your story. Matt, we'd love to hear your story. Tell us how you got started in the industry and how you came to Xbox. Hi, I'm Matt Hole. My pronouns are he and him. And my origin story really started from uh, some advice from a comic artist. He basically told me if I want to be in an entertainment industry, I need to move to the city where that industry is. And so I uh, took that advice to heart moved from my little town up in Alaska, drove all the way down through Canada, down to Los Angeles, surfed on couches, applied to every game job I could, and finally got my first QA position uh, working for a mobile game company. Since then, I've been very fortunate to be able to work for a bunch of different game companies, including uh, Activision, Electronic Arts, and finally found my way all the way back up to the Pacific Northwest to work at 343 with, uh, with Halo. Thank you, Matt. Ellen, it would be great to hear how you got your beginning in games and how you came to Xbox. Sure, thanks, Fiona. Um, my name's Ellen Porter. My pronouns are uh, she and her. Um, and I, I'm actually very new to the industry. Um, I've always been very interested in the entertainment industry and gaming industry, but it never really aligned with my career until very recently. Um, I've been with Microsoft for a while now. And in December of 2019, I, I became a mom. Um, I have a beautiful baby girl. Um, and when I was out on maternity leave, a couple things happened. The first thing is um, uh, COVID uh, hit and everybody got the work from home order. Um, and then after that, I, I realized over the course of my maternity leave that I, I really loved being a mom. I was very passionate about being a mom. And so eventually my leave was over and it was time to come back to work. And I was looking at coming back to work uh, remotely um, and, and giving up kind of something I loved. You know, I have to take my daughter to daycare uh, in order to come back to work. And so I, I, I took some time to, to think about, you know, if, if, if I really wanted to come back into the into um, uh, into the working uh, industry. Um, and, and I eventually decided that that I did. But if if I was going to, it needed to be uh, doing something I was very passionate about. So I took a look around Microsoft at what else was available. And I came across this posting for Turn 10 Studios. Um, if you would have ever asked me over the course of my career or, or my education what my ideal job was, I would have basically uh, recited to you this job description. It was for a software engineering position where I would be helping build tools for artists and game designers um, you know, to do their best work to help create products that people around the world love. Um, so I applied to the job and I was fortunate enough to get it. And now I'm, I'm in a very good uh, position that I, I get to do something I love every day. Thank you. 
Thank you, Ellen. Christine, we'd love to hear how you started in the game industry and how you came to work at Xbox. Uh, thanks. Um, my name is Christine Thompson. My pronouns are she, her. Uh, I am a recovering journalist. Um, I worked in newspapers for a while and then eventually realized that wasn't where my passion was. I was a storyteller. Um, and so I made a leap of faith and wanted to change industries into something I loved, which was games. Um, I worked in some positions of marketing and publishing, then moved to game writing. I've had the opportunity to work on some incredible games. I've been lead writer of Star Trek Online and Destiny 2. Uh, I've worked freelance for a while. I really missed being a part of a team because narrative touches every part of a game and it really works when the narrative team is embedded in the studio and is, is there with the team every day. So I started talking to the initiative right as the lockdown hit. Um, so I've never been to the office. I've not even been to Santa Monica. I've never met any of my coworkers in person. Uh, the initi initiative was great about sending out everything I needed to work. Um, but it has been, you know, it's been a different experience. It wasn't quite what I expected when I decided I wanted to rejoin a team. <laughs> Thank you for sharing that. Well, so we know there's been a lot of challenges to being distributed development teams working, you know, in, in our homes, being remote from our colleagues. Um, let's talk more about specific challenges uh, within your individual teams and, and perhaps solutions that you have found. Matt, tell us a little bit about some of the problems you've encountered specifically and, and how your team has worked to solve them. Well, as a scrum team, uh, we're big on you know, physical artifacts, right? Task boards and whiteboards and stuff like that. And, and as we transition into work from home, that's something that, that gets lost. So we have to look for digital versions. And um, something that's been really helpful for us is looking at planning software like Planner and like ADO and being able to have those virtual task boards that we can still meet around um, and still plan around and and use to focus and use as touch points to make sure that we are all still in step and, and still um, aligned as we work towards our, our releases. Thank you, Matt. Amanda, I, I know at the coalition there have certainly been some hurdles to jump. It would be very interesting to hear, you know, kind of your biggest issues as a game development team working remotely and how you've worked to to support some of those. Yeah, you know, so I think some of the biggest ones for us was maintaining your relationships um, and the social interaction, to be honest. But, um, and I'm not sure we've actually solved any of them to date. Um, but we knew it was very important for us to, um, just to try and emulate the social interaction as much as we could, as well as communication. Um, some of the things that we did was at the very beginning of the of um, the pandemic, we put more touch points and checkpoints during the day um, just to make sure that everybody was doing OK. Um, we also monitored our capacity and velocity because we didn't know how the team was doing initially. Um, you know, whilst at home, everybody in a different situation. Um, and then in the longer term, what we did is we actually put together a work from home strike team. And we started to collate information from the whole team just to start to understand um, you know, how they were getting on, um, what the issues were, what was working and what wasn't. And what we've done with that is we've actually put together some action items um, just to help with the work from home situation. Great, great tools, great ideas. Christine, you know, you've talked about not yet meeting your team. Uh, there's clearly some specific challenges being part of narrative and writing. What have those challenges look like and, and how have you been working to manage them? Um, yeah, it, it has been a challenge, but it's been a fun one to kind of take on. Um, my role is as much com communication and connection as it is writing. So it's trying to figure out how to have that communication and connection while being completely remote. We are working with other teams. We need to make sure that design and art know what the story is doing and I need to know what the gameplay is and we have to figure out how to make it all work together. We have to figure out how to make a writer's room work completely remote. And sometimes that may be spending 10 minutes talking about the show we all watched that weekend uh, because that provides connection and that, you know, that gets us to that space of like connection and vulnerability that is essential for a writer's room to work. Um, so it's a lot of virtual coffees. It's a lot of trying to reach out and, 
you can't just grab someone in the hallway and say, hey, can we talk about X? You have to be like, okay, I need to set up a call, 15 minutes, you know? Um, and it's a little more formal and a little more planned, but it, you find ways to make it work. Thank you, Christine. <laughs> Ellen, I know your situation is a little different that you've been accustomed to working remotely, but there are probably some challenges working with your, your turn 10 team. Tell us a little bit about that and how you've been solving some of those challenges. Yeah, absolutely. Um, like you mentioned, I've worked from home before, uh, but that was that experience was a little bit different in that um, I, I had actually worked in person with my team for a while before we, uh, working remotely. So I knew everybody already um, prior to the work from home experience. And it, it was a, it was still a little bit challenging because, uh, you know, people would forget to make meetings, teams meetings. But um, this time around, things are a little bit different. Now I don't have that problem. Uh, all the meetings are teams meetings. Um, but I have a different problem in that, uh, like a few of the other um, panelists here, we've, we've never met our team in person. Um, so it, it becomes a lot harder to get to know who my colleagues are. Um, and, uh, you know, my day-to-day -day, uh, work doesn't change a whole lot. I'm a software engineer. I, I spend a lot of time kind of solo coding. Um, but there are times when it's nice to be able to reach out to a colleague and say, hey, you worked on this piece of the software before. Um, can you kind of walk me through the architecture of it? Something like that. Uh, I can still do that now, and I still do that, um, particularly by setting meetings. But it's it's a little bit more challenging because it just has to be a lot more um, intentional. All of my communication has to, has to kind of, you know, there's a little more effort involved. It's not as easy as just dropping by someone's office. Um, and you can kind of see when people are available and not uh, via the little icon on, on Teams, but it, it's still not the same as being able to walk by their office and see if they look like they're really in the middle of a task or if they look free so you can kind of drop in and ask questions and stuff. So that's probably been the biggest challenge for me. Um, the studio as a whole has done a really good job, though, of kind of overcoming that. We, we meet pretty frequently as a team. Um, every a uh, couple times a week as a smaller team and then uh, sort of once a month as a larger team and then at least once a quarter as a studio. And that's really helped kind of um, get me onboarded um, and feel kind of connected to everybody else. Ellen, thank you for sharing that. You know, a couple of you have mentioned some very specific tools and, and techniques. You know, maybe you go a layer deeper. It'd be interesting to hear if there are any specific tools, methodologies, sort of tips um, that you find yourself or your immediate team using. Christine, tell us more about what you may be using as tools with your team. I live on Teams. Uh, teams is coordination, Teams is meetings, Teams is writing room, Teams is just grabbing somebody for a quick video chat. Um, the file sharing enables us to pass files back and forth and have multiple people working on one document at a time. Uh, we do use middleware for uh, source control and file organization and, and for script writing. Um, but being able to coordinate that with teams has been super helpful. Thank you. Amanda, it'd be great to hear what types of, of particular tools and techniques your team may be using to solve some of these challenges. Yeah, so to, so the same as Christine, I live on Teams as well. Um, you know, it's been great for me just in terms of um, communication. Uh, we have groups on there, so you know, I meet with my producers all the time. And um, what I also love actually that they've done on Teams is uh, is just the um, with the meetings is all the emojis and and the ways that you can kind of socially connect. Um, I I just love the way that they've done that over the last kind of couple of uh, like kind of last six months. Um, the other thing that's been really great for us has been Mural. Um, you know, we usually have whiteboards at work for brainstorming and retrospectives, and of course, we haven't been able to do that. Um, and that's been a great that's been a great software for us to be able to connect um, and just to be able to uh, to be able to continue that work. Um, of course, the other one is Jira. You know, um, do all of our product um, planning in there, so that's been key as well. Amanda, terrific tips. Ellen, in your world, what, what are the tools in tech that perhaps have been supporting you best? Sure. Um, you know, since since we've started uh, here, there are a couple new tools that I use now that I'm in a game studio like Perforce. But for the most part, the tools that I use are very similar to what I was using uh, previously. I use Visual Studio every day for, for most of my coding tasks. Um, I get for source control occasionally and Perforce for source control. Uh, and then after that, I use all the, you know, Microsoft Productivity Suite, uh, Outlook, and Teams, as others have mentioned. Uh, but the biggest thing I've noticed is, is how we're using these tools has changed a lot. 
um, where before we might meet in a in a conference room and write on a whiteboard and kind of you know everything would be lost to just the people who had who had been in that meeting. Um, now we have a better opportunity to start recording meetings. Uh, we share screens more frequently. Um, that really helps when I want to kind of walk through code with somebody. It's really convenient to be able to share a screen and go through it and even potentially record it so I can go back and watch it later. Um, and then when we start on kind of bigger tasks, new tasks, um, we, we really have to document everything now. So uh, we kind of spend a lot more time creating documentation and, and working through documentation uh, collaboratively with others. Um, so it'll, it'll be um, interesting to see when we go back to the office if we kind of keep up some of these practices because I think a lot of them have actually kind of improved um, my day-to-day -day, uh, job. Um, it's really convenient to have a lot of information to kind of go back on that previously may have been missed, especially if you know you missed a meeting or something. Ellen, great thoughts. Matt, to, to wrap on that particular question, be very interesting to hear you know, sort of technical and tool solutions that you're working with at 343. Well, it's, it's kind of funny just how quickly teams went from just, you know, a helpful uh, piece of software to a vital part of our everyday, as you heard uh, from my fellow panelists here. Um, one thing that has really helped us has been um, being able to use these tools to set up a uh, just a coordinated rhythm of work that everyone can get used to in terms of habits. Like, um, like Ellen was talking about, it's really about not, we've always kind of used these tools, but now we're using them in, in a different way. And it's really been showing in terms of efficiency, how we can keep um, getting familiar with these rhythms. And I'm really excited also to see when we come back, uh, what we bring back with us. Because just having all this stuff recorded and all this stuff captured and all this stuff persistent um, and being able to collaborative, collaboratively work on documentation and stuff together through OneDrive and, and stuff like that has been just super helpful. And um, I think we're going to come back into the studio you know, whenever that is, and we'll have a, a lot of better practices set up uh, when we're ready to do that. Thank you, Matt, and thank you for talking about what happens when we go back to the studios. We think we will eventually. We don't know what that looks like yet, but I imagine each of you has you know, both apprehension and excitement about going back into a team environment. Amanda, it would be great to hear from you about what you expect once you perhaps go back to a studio and you know, what, will, what will you do first? What will be the most important thing to you? Um. I think the most important thing to me is just to start to build those relationships and friendships, um, just face to face. Uh, I think seeing the people who I work with on a day to day basis and seeing people who I don't work with um, also, because I, you know, I have a smaller group with being on work from home. I don't, don't see people in the office who I would um, who I wouldn't work with. Um, you know, face to face meetings, the water cooler chats, um, coffee chats and social gatherings is what I'm really looking forward to. Um, the drawbacks, I think, from uh, going back to the office, I think we're much more attached to our families now um, and the work-life flow of that and the flexibility that you get from that. Um, I've heard a lot of people say, you know, no one's looking forward to the commute again. Um, you know, same for me too. Um, so I think work from home has definitely given us that balance and flexibility. Um, so I'm really eager to see what the model looks like when we do actually uh, return to the office. Great points. Thank you so much, Amanda. Christine, given that you haven't even moved into the state where your team uh, exists and is potentially going to go back into the studio eventually, um, what are you looking forward to and, and what are some lessons from the pandemic you will take with you going into your studio? Um, well, first I get to go through the culture shock of um, moving to a different place and adjusting to that and also having the new kid in school experience several months after having started work. Um, but I'm, I'm looking forward to that. I'm looking forward to actually getting to meet everyone. And what I'm really looking forward to are those little moments of serendipity that make game dev work. When you like overhear a conversation or see something on somebody's screen, and then all of a sudden you're like, oh wait, I've got an idea. And you start talking about it and that gives them an idea. And all of a sudden you're specking out a new feature that's gonna make the game better. Um, what I want to bring with me is balance. Uh, I found balance uh, working remote. Um, 
I've been more able to close the laptop when I need to. I can take a workout class that I didn't have time to before. I, you know, I'm getting to spend more time with my family. And as a writer, I really need that focus time. And that's easier to find here uh, at home. So it's going to be trying to find that balance and to get the advantages of working in the office. Thank you, Christine. Mm -hmm. Matt, same question for you. What what are what are the lessons you've learned from the pandemic experience that you expect to engage in the studio? And what are you most looking forward to when you have that chance to be with your team again? I mean, I'm looking forward to solving problems while we walk uh, and talk to get coffee, right? I'm looking forward to being able to wheel my desk over to someone, or sorry, wheel my chair over to someone's desk and and look at a problem together. Um, those are the things that I really miss and that that um, those those quick uh, collaborative moments, those personal collaborative moments, I think are, are something that I, I really miss. One thing um, I am curious about as we move back, you know, when we moved, when we moved uh, to work from home, um, depending on the, on the studio or the place you're at, but for many of us, I think it was it was a single event, right? A decision was made, and we all uh, transitioned equally and together to work from home. That uh, whatever the return back to the office is going to take, it very likely won't be a single event, right? Some people will, will be coming in before uh, before others, and it could be a hybrid or whatever that whatever it shapes out to be. It's going to be different than last time. So um, I'm curious how we you know we've built up these rhythms and we've built up these touch points and and how we distribute information and how we distribute vision and stuff like that through these creative products. Uh, being able to do that when we're coming back in a staggered situation is going to be a challenge um, that we're going to need to tackle. Thank you for that thought. Very interesting. Ellen, being in a situation where you are already working partially remote, what would you take away from the pandemic experience once your team is able to go back in the studio and, and how do you see that affecting work moving forward? Yeah, you know, I think um, the one thing that I'm going to hopefully try and take with me is uh, how important it is to have productivity hours. You know, um, having kind of quiet time at home, just working, uh, I have been very productive. I've been able to have, you know, hour, two hour, three hours at a time where I have no distractions whatsoever. And that's been really helpful. Um, all my times in the office, it's really tough to find big blocks of time like that where you can you can just really focus on your work. Um, but I, I will say I, I really miss the energy of, of um, being in, in the office and around other, you know, other people um, from from all the kind of uh, group meetings that we have together and, and uh, the use of emojis and teams. Um, I, I can tell that I work with a very passionate group of people um, and I, I'm really excited to get back and kind of see that in person, um, get to kind of experience uh, that firsthand. So these are terrific insights and lessons learned. It would be great to share with our audience today individually. I'd love to hear your sort of best pro tip or recommendation now that you've gone through this experience of being hired during the pandemic and working remotely. Amanda, tell us your, your best recommendation. Um, I think the best thing is connection and trying to achieve um, a connection that, you know, we try and emulate um, the face-to-face -face connection. Um, I think ways that I've done that or I've found that I've been connected the most with my teams is if we have our cameras on. Um, and, you know, you can get to see people because I've been in meetings for the last year and there's still some people I don't know what they look like because you know, not everybody puts their cameras on and wants to. Um, I think that's that, that's key. Um, having virtual coffee, you know, I've had lots of virtual coffees with people on my teams just to try and get to know people. Um, and kind of what Ella mentioned before, you know, one of the things that we do in our meetings is we have like five minutes at the beginning where, you know, we talk about, like, we don't talk about work. We talk about kind of what we've been doing, you know, we'll have, you know, jokes about kind of what's going on in the weather um, and things like that. And I think that just helps. Um, it just helps build those relationships that, you know, make become naturally, become more naturally when we're actually in the office. Amanda, thank you so much for that great tip. Matt, it would be great to hear your recommendation as well. Well, the, uh, the through line for my career, the, my favorite part about uh, working in this industry, no matter what the project is or the company is, has always been the connection with the team. So my recommendation is to establish that connection as soon as possible. 
And I've been really lucky at 3.3 with my manager and my reports and the rest of the folks on the team who've really gone out of their way in this remote situation to reach out to me and make me feel like part of the team. Uh, I've been really lucky and, and, and it's really helped me get onboarded really fast and, um, you know, start proving some benefits and proving some value to the team as soon as possible. So I'd highly recommend when that new person comes on board, go out of your way. I know it's a lot more effort than it usually is when you're in the office, but please, uh, make them feel comfortable, get personal with them and, um, make them feel like part of the team. Thank you, Matt. Ellen, please share your best tip for our audience. Sure. Um, so I have, uh, so if, if you're going to be working from home, my best tip for you is, is try not to work too much. You know, I find it, uh, really easy now that my office is at home for me to just kind of work outside of work hours because it's right there and so convenient. So one of the things that I really try to do is keep, uh, for me, I'm fortunate enough to have an office so I can kind of keep a physical barrier between when I'm at work and when I'm at home. So I can, you know, be a hundred percent present at work when I'm there and a hundred percent present at home when I'm at home. Um, I know that's a lot harder to do if you don't necessarily have different spaces, uh, but I do find that um, that very helpful. Um, for when we return to the office, I have a little bit of advice there too. I, I feel like throughout the pandemic, um, people have grown a lot with empathy. You know, people tend to be a lot more, seem to be a lot more understanding of everybody's uh, circumstance now. And I think that's a very valuable lesson that we should all take back with us when we go to the office. Great insight. I really, really appreciate that. Christine, let us know your best recommendation. Yeah, uh, the, my other panelists have had some amazing recommendations. So I'm going to go small. Um, I'm going to say noise canceling headphones. Uh, I live in a one bedroom apartment. My desk is in the living room because that's where it would fit. There are moments when my husband is watching a Sasquatch movie about six feet behind me and I am trying to run a writer's room. So Noise canceling headphones keeps us both happy. This has been a terrific experience talking with all of you today and hopefully very insightful to our attendees to GameStack Live. I want to thank each and every one of you for participating. And I want to say thank you also to our attendees. Uh, please enjoy the rest of our accessibility sessions when you have a chance. And thank you so much.